Hey, good morning guys. Coming to you from my basement, which is my lab or my second office, if you will. This is where I have my traffic signal set up. I'm, it's going to be a short week this week. I'm taking my wife out to Kansas City to see her, one of her favorite singers, Andy Grammer. I've been telling her all year that I was going to take her to see a concert. And unfortunately, the tour didn't come anywhere near me. So it's a four hour trip out to Kansas City so she can see them. So hence to say, I will not be out in the street very much this week. So this is the video you're getting. Uh, this is the lab, like I said, where I have my traffic signal set up. This is where I do any kind of modifications that I may want to do out in the street. I do it safely from uh, you know in-house, test out any features that I have, make sure it runs safely. I've got my test board over here. You can kind of see that the best you can. Uh, but anyway, it's it's going to simulate what would actually be out on the street. I could do it in-house, run it, test it, and then incorporate it out into the field. Right now, I'm just laying out some, some features here. Uh, I'm also doing some uh, future classes that I have for my members and my membership. Uh, it's going to be print reading, which is what we're going to be uh, learning after the new year, uh, which, by the way, we just closed the doors on the membership. I know some of you have been signing up the wait list. Unfortunately, uh, the free trial ended. Um, had about 30% joined, so that's not too bad of an addition. Um, so those of you that have joined, sorry you're going to have to wait a full year next year when I open the doors again, but I'll let you know when that, that happens. Um, anyway, so this is my my layout here. I know some of you have asked about what is all involved in the traffic signal cabinet as far as components are concerned, so we'll just do a, a little run-through here. I'm also going to show you some kind of specific panels and components that we have just in, to my knowledge, in our district that we use. Kind of a cool feature. I'll show you that. So let's get right to it. I'll show you what we have here. Okay, so if we're starting right from the beginning here, here's a traffic signal controller. All of its inputs and outputs are coming in to these three harnesses. Also an optional fourth harness, which is the D connector uh, that comes from over here on the D panel. But everything else is coming from this back panel, which is what you're gonna see in most cabinets. You're, this is the 16 position back panel. There may be 12 position. I think there's like six position. Um, but this is uh, what you'll see usually is a standard, I think, out there in the field. What this does here, uh, so you got all your back panel wiring here. These are load switches. So these take the outputs from the controller, your red, yellow, and greens, come out at a low level, logic level, coming through these, the load switches convert it to voltage that the signals can use, usually about 120 volts. So they take the low level uh, voltage, convert it to the high voltage, work its way through your transfer relays, through the wiring, and on out to the street. Going on over here. So you've got 12, I'm sorry, you've got eight vehicle movements here that you can run. And then you've got four overlaps, which just are indications that mirror a phase. And then you've got four pedestrian movements. You, so you have that ability on this back panel. There's your flasher unit. So if you would go into a flash state, say uh, the conflict monitor, which is right here that by the way, a conflict monitor, all it does is it's basically the watchdog of the cabinet. It's overlooking the entire intersection. Make sure that you don't have conflicting movements or uh, multiple indications of the same direction come up at the same time. Uh, uh, shorts. So it, it does a lot to keep the traffic signal safe. If it detects something and puts this in flash, this is a circuit that it forces to run out to the street. So I know it's just ping ponging, but that's that red flash that you'd see out in the street usually uh, whenever it detects a fault. So you've got two circuits running. You've got your all your green, yellow, and reds or your pedestrian movements running down here. And this is a secondary circuit, which is your flash circuit. Both of those are passed through through so these transfer relays. So depending on what the circuit is running, the flash or the normal circuit, it's gonna pass through there and run to your field wires, which then run out to your indications that are out in the street. So you got the greens up right now. That's mimicking, well, now you got yellows. 
Now you got reds. These are gonna be greens coming out down there. Your greens are now there. Yellows, there's your yellow, there's your red, and then it's back to green. So that's, that's if you didn't know, that is basically what's going on in the street. Your output from your controller, down to your load switches, which get converted, and then through the extra circuitry, through the wires, and out to the field where the indications are. Now, I, I don't have them hooked up here, but here's the pedestrian uh, indications, or a few. I could wire those in, or I could just wire, you see the blank extra terminals there for bulbs. I could wire the, the, the bulbs there. I could run the overlaps there. Um, if I was running flashing yellow arrows, I can add an extra bulb there and wire it in um, to wherever that flashing yellow overlap would go. And then we could test, like I said, a lot of it could be tested in-house. So if I'm if I'm opening up the cabinet door, this is my back panel. This is what I'm seeing on the back side right in front of me. Over here, this is would be, if you open up the door, this would be on the right side of your cabinet. This is the power panel. This is where the utility line comes in, uh, feeds through some breakers, and then works through some circuitry here to clean the signal up and give some suppression. And then um, that's this is our bus relay. This is what determines whether we run the colors out in the street um, or if it goes, uh, breaks out and runs the flash circuit. But that's controlled partially by the conflict monitor and some external switches. So that's gonna be on your right side. The left side over here is where we have all of our inputs coming in for vehicles and pedestrian movements. That's those two panels. That's your D panel I'm talking about there. They, that's where a lot of your preemption happens. Uh, other features you, you can have happen there. Um, this is one of the specific panels I was talking about that, to my knowledge, I think is the only one that is out there. Um, this panel is a, one of its features is a conflict monitor reset. So usually when this thing goes in the flash, well, when this thing goes in the flash, you have to go out and reset this by here. There's your reset button. This is, if you would go out, you have to determine where the problem is or what the problem is, fix it. And then to get this thing to come out of flash, you would hit that reset button. I cover 16 counties for our district and I can't be everywhere at once. So the ones that are online that I can remotely connect to from afar, these panels allow me to to reset the conflict monitor, which, okay, so you're probably thinking that, hey, that's, that's a pretty unsafe condition to be able to remotely reset the conflict monitor and not be on site. So there's gonna be a lot of things that have to be present. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really want a lot of things available to me to make that determination whether I can reset that conflict monitor. And that's kind of a cool thing that we have going on uh, that are, but I've been trying to push this initiative to just get all these signals on the network and com basically connect every component that we could possibly have. And I'll show you the components. You know, I want to have access to the conflict monitor because I want to be able to determine what the alarm logs are for, I'm sorry, the, the logs that it logged as, as faults. So I can determine if it was maybe just a one-time occurrence, maybe a storm came through, it was a slight glitch. And I can I can use that as some of my information, or if it's an ongoing thing, so that might it may not reset even if I could reset it. Uh, I want to have access to the controller, so I can check the alarm logs that are in there that it logged. Maybe make timing changes to to the existing timing sequence just to get uh, maybe traffic moving a little bit better. I want to have access to uh, here's a IP power strip, so anything that's connected into these ports. I can remotely log in internally, cycle power to each individual port. So if I have a maybe some video detection and the cameras are are flaking out or you know causing the signal to unnecessarily serve traffic when there's no one there, maybe the processor just needs a quick reset. I can go ahead and log into this, reset the port that that processor is is, is plugged into, and then cycle power to it. Many times, just a reset of a Controller or reset, I'm sorry, reset of a electronic device will take care of that. So having access, access to that is very helpful. Uh, what else? Oh, the battery backup unit, which is not present here, but I can log into that. I can check the voltage, check the current draw, 
see if there's faults that uh, maybe we had a lot of power outages there. I can check those alarms. And then most importantly, having some kind of video feed so I can actually see what's going on at the intersection. And if I have access to all of that and I can determine that it's safe to do so, I can go ahead and log in and hit this, well, download some timing into this controller and make this thing do a simple reset to this device and bring the signal out of flash. So kind of, a, to me, kind of a cool thing. I don't know anywhere, anywhere else that they actually do that. Uh, so anyway, so that's, that's another thing there. I touch upon the conflict monitor, the controller. Um, there is your reset panel. There's all your inputs there. There's your back panel. Uh, this would be here, um, kind of, this is our tech panel that would be inside the controller. So I can, I'll just show you right here. So if I want to shut the controller off, what I'm doing is I'm killing power to my controller over here. And then that puts this thing into a fault status. So if I turn this thing back on, uh, there we go. Turn this thing back on control. It's going to fire that thing back up there. It's powering up. Um, I have the ability to put the signal in flash or normal from inside the cabinet. Uh, let's see if this thing comes out and runs again. Okay, we're back running down here. If I put this thing into a flash state right there, that just is going to put the signal into a red flash state. And like I said, this is exactly what would be going on out in the street if I was doing this. Run that normal. If there was a light in this socket here, this is your cabinet light so that if you wanted to turn on your cabinet light, if it was like whatever, you know, nighttime, you couldn't see in there, you could do that. Um, and then these are, they're not, uh, where are we at here? These things are not tied in at the moment, but these, if you ever see those police panels that you have out in the cabinet, uh, externally, you could have a little bitty cabinet door that takes a skeleton key. You open that up and you would have access to a few different uh, of these switches here, which um, you could put the signal in flash. You could actually kill power to the signal, at least in our design you could, um, which would make the signal go dark. Um, anyway, this, this is just some of the features that I have down here. Like I said, it's really nice to have this set up in my house downstairs in my basement, because if you ever try to do stuff from the office, you know, you have people walking in and out, it'll break your train of thought. I like that being in a quiet setting, be able to actually see everything happen, log it, and then if it works fine, fantastic. I can incorporate it. If not, you know, you can work the bugs out and make it work. I'm, I've got a few uh, different designs I'm looking to, to incorporate here soon so I can do all that testing. And you'll probably see that in a future video here too uh, on some of these designs. So anyway, that's it. If you guys got any questions about any of this stuff, um, you can hit me up at my email. It's john at streetsmartstraffic.com. Um, check out my website, uh, streetsmartstraffic.com. And uh, in the meantime, just, hey, I appreciate you guys watching the videos and I hope this was helpful. And I'll see you guys next week. Yeah.